So today we have a special guest, John Burkle, the man with the pram. Yep. How long have you been fundraising? Well, I've been fundraising for a long, long time. But for Mike Millen, if it's just for Mike Millen, for the last 16, 17 years. And in that time, we've just managed to raise one million pound and a few more we share. So that would be great. Pushing this pram all over, the, all over the place, all over the country, all over Sheffield, uh, <coughs> my mascot on the front, which is one of my late wife's teddy bears, and he knows every short road in Sheffield. I don't, I just follow him. So I just see he's the one that keeps us going, you know what I mean? So he knows everywhere when he's going. The pram itself is part of me. It's my daughter's pram. We'll never ever part with it, never yeah. ever part with it. How many miles do you think you have walked? Well, it definitely has gone over a million miles, that's certainly. I think he in, I did my first race in 1967, which is <laughs> a long, long time ago. And that was, uh, one or two might remember it here, I don't know it, but the old Sheffield Star Walk, which was a very, very famous walking race. I would think he definitely got over two, maybe two to three, three million miles without a shadow of a doubt. How long did your documentary take to make? Uh, the documentary was done by a couple of lads on the uh, Matt, uh, Matt Exton and uh, Sean. They did it and they did it over maybe three, four or five years. But bear in mind the Sheffield lads, it was a Sheffield documentary that uh, they thought I was a little bit eccentric and rather bend it in the possible way. But I mean, having said that, <laughs> it did. He did take a lot of time <coughs> and they were, they were great lads and I think when he did it and he, he brought the film out which is called One in a Million on YouTube and I think he, he, it had a tremendous reception. Well, it weren't meant to do that but in a lot of, lot of things it brought tears to my eyes, especially that little lass that one from Barnsley Road, I'll never forget that. That's uh, something that spurs me on even now because if I have a bad time in a marathon or a race, what well, I do, and I'm having a bad time, which I do, you yeah, have aches and pains and like anybody else, and I'm having a bad that little face comes to me, and a smile on her face brings tears to my eyes, and I don't want that to ever go. I want it to stay there forever, because uh, it, it's driving me on, it's wearing me on. Do you wear your green rig at home? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a tough question. When it's not in Wesher, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Um, how much money have you made so far? I'm going to try to keep on going as long as I can to raise as much as I can. Since we raised the million pound in May, I think we're up to about another 57,000 on top of that. So we've done really, really well since, since May to, to raise that kind of money. And I'm going to carry on as long as I can. At 84, I feel okay. I've had my burn dripping this morning. <laughs> I put some Ruby D40 on my knees. <laughs> I don't recommend that, by the way. I'm only showing what I do. What are your hobbies? Hobbies? Uh, well, <laughs> at one time, uh, many, many years ago, when my, my missus was alive and, and oh. my daughter, I used to have a go at uh, poetry. I used to like writing a few poems, you know, and again, you know what I mean, so, and uh, I of course remember my old school teacher at school uh, in 19, when I left in 1950s, old Ted Edwards, smashing bloke, he said, you want to be a journalist, he said, because he said, you've got a gift for it, like, so, I, I, I like doing that, but my obvious, I suppose, were race walking. I wanted to win every race yeah. I was in, I did, I did, but, I realise we can't all be more fella. We can't all be, be champions, you know what I mean? But I look at it like this. If I go in a race, and it takes me a long time to get round, especially now at my age, and if I finish last, I'm not last because I've won. I've, I've got a medal. I've won. I'm a winner. Everybody in their race is a winner. If you entered that race and you finish, you're a winner. Sheffield United was in Sheffield. Other Sheffield Club. 
Well, I've got to say this. I might be a Wednesday, uh, but I mean, uh, Wednesday, all right, but I'm as welcome at Bramall Lane as what yes. I'm at Hillsborough. Mm -hmm. Because both sets of supporters yes. have been 100%, no, no, that's wrong, the wrong word, John, 1,000% or 10,000% behind what I've tried to do. And they, <coughs> both yes. sets of supporters have been absolutely brilliant. My grandson doesn't believe he's a mad United, -ite. not his fault, like, but I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's absolutely mad United, -ite and uh, he, he, he cannot believe when I tell him that we stood together, when the United is together, on Copper Hillsborough, at Bramall Lane, watching Derek Bangham in here and watching Jimmy Egan down at Lane. Don't know where they get biscuits. Right. Did they hear that question right? Yeah. Don't they get biscuits. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. Yes, now and again, now and again, I'm not saying that but now and again, yeah. 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 That is great, yeah, yeah. Anything, Lynn, anything for your energy, I'm, yeah. happy. I'm for, 100% for, no, 1000% for. But I like my bread dripping. I like my bread dripping. Yeah. A bit of salt on, black stuff on, can't beat it. But you can't make it like my mother made it. I'm nearest one, I think they can't make it, is British perhaps, but. Uh, they're so not bad, bad but so uh, my mother worked with brilliant. I was brought up in, in yeah. my years, you know what I mean, so 1939 when I was born, so... I mean, I didn't know my father, to be quite honest with you, because I was born and he'd gone to war. First time I met my dad was, I was walking down James Street at down and with a limp, I'm only about four or five years old then, I was well, about five years old, 44, 45. I was walking down with an old fella that uh, had been in the First World War, smashing block, old Colin, he were, Colin Jackson, he called him, a smashing block. I'm walking down with him down down road and this soldier was coming up road and then he says to me, he said, oh, that is John, lad. And I said, no, Colin, it's the father, he says, just like that. I said, what, man? And he said, that's the father. And I went down and he went to to my dad, Joseph, he called him, my dad, Joe. And it's now then Joey says, uh, you know what this is? He didn't know. He says, it's the lad John. He said, is it? So I picked me up, put my his shoulders on. I can't remember that as plain as all. You know what I mean? So that's the first time I saw me that. You know, of course, my mother was at the end of the entry. Oh, she knows. Well, she run down, i never forget that, you know. And that's about the first memory I can have about, uh, about war, which was a terrible time anyway. For, uh, my dad all, he never mentioned much about war, he said, he said the Germans didn't want to fight, we didn't want to fight, he said, but it's just stupid. They should sit down and sort it out like they're doing now. I mean, they're still fighting now for, for no reason at all. They should be able to sort it out without any trouble at all. What is your favourite part of fundraising? The best part of fundraising is, is everybody that puts anything in my bucket. Yeah. They, become, they don't become just people that put money in, they become friends. I was asked that question by a lot, by the television, by uh, Radio Sheffield, presenter there called Ronnie Robinson. Yeah. <coughs> well, Ronnie was a great friend of mine, yes. and uh, he walked with me one day, and he said, I'm walking around Sheffield with you, John, he says. Uh, and that's how he used to talk, Ronnie, like, smashing blow. He says, I'm going to ask you one question. He says, who's the most important person you've ever met? I looked at him and I said, well, I said, you couldn't get out of the Queen at the time. I mean, you tell me, I've had dinner with Queen, lovely lass. I said that and all, I thought I'd be in town in a minute. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> she was she were a, she were a nice person to talk to, and her husband as well, he was a nice. He loved the broad Yorkshire accent, he loved it. Yeah. Anyway, Ronnie asked this question, he says, who's the most important person you've ever met? And as he said that, an old lady put some money in my bucket. I said, that's the most important person to me. He said, well, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. He said, that's the most important person to me, that lady that put it. She might have not got two eighties for a penny, but she just shoved some money in that bucket, and that's all to get the million quid. There's only one city in England that's got a man with a pram, and I'm proud to be that man, I've got to say that. I mean, it's, it's winning that pride of Britain, I couldn't believe it myself, you know what I mean? The people that 
this won the big awards, they know, they know they've won it. But the fundraisers don't know they've won until the night. They don't know that. And they came round to the table and they were this uh, big bloke, six foot in a gas lamp, big bloke, great big bloke. Um, <laughs> old Sheffield saying, I think, that six foot in a gas lamp. Anyway, the big bloke, Ashley. Is it Ashley Banjo? Ashley Banjo. Ashley, jo Ashley Banjo. Ah, uh, George Formby's mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he got the cameras going yeah, around the, the, the fundraisers, and he got he got it on this last from Scotland. Mary, they call this. I love it. She'd cycle around Scotland or something, and they had the cameras on her. And I thought, well, she's won it. Well done. I was talking to her. I said, well done, Mary. You've won, love. Well done. And he swung round. His camera come round again. He said, no, it's you, John. He said, you. And I couldn't you believe it. Yeah. I said, well. Where's my pram? Because my pram had disappeared, you see. Security took my pram, and then next minute, Angela Rippon come down with pram down. And I said to her, I said, that's got it now, that's got to shove it to Sheffield now, the nose. And she, she, she started laughing as well. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I, Ashley Banjo, he's a really big bloke. He won at first man to get snow when it's snowing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think, you're a nice boy to talk yeah. to. What? Music, do you like? My wife's favourite music was anything but King Coyle, Nat King Coyle. Oh, Nick! Uh, Nick not King not Coyle. the wrong word, it? Nat King Coyle, it should have been, it? Nat King Coyle. Any, yeah, music, right. some, any music, really, I mean, I listen to it, you know, if uh, if it's on, I, I like to hear it, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. I haven't got a, I haven't got a favourite song as such. How did you feel about getting the freedom of the city? The Freedom of City, well that's a great honour, uh, to, uh, that's a lovely question now, to get the Freedom of City is the highest honour you can get, I mean in Sheffield this is the highest one and there's not many people who got that and to be up there with such as Nelson, Nelson Mandela, Jesse Dennis, a great friend of mine, uh, Brendan, Brendan Ingle, which means that you you can go anywhere you want in Sheffield without any problem at all. Uh, I've got to say this and I don't have to buy anything when I'm out, I'll be honest with you now. So anybody wants to shop and give me a list. But, <laughs> no, seriously, I won't uh, never abuse anything like that, obviously not. But um, it's a wonderful thing to have that freedom at City. I mean, uh, you can drive your sheep down middle of the road. I've got an idea about that. We, we're working on it at home. We might, well, we might put it into practice sometime the summer next year. Uh, get a couple of sheep dressed in Wednesday colours, get a couple of sheep dressed in United <laughs> colours and drive them down Moor and charge them a five and they go past them. You know what I mean? <laughs> How many trainers have you worn out? Oh, 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 a few of them. Now, I get offered a lot by a lot of people. I mean, uh, trainers are very special. You've got to have the right shoes for the right thing, otherwise it doesn't work, no matter how you look at it. I've seen people go into London Marathon Bought new trainers day before. Worst thing you can do. And they're hobbling in, they see them coming in to finish like that. I mean, one lass <laughs> into Great North Run. She's coming up near finish and she'd had it completely. I said, You're all right, love. She's saying, I don't think I'm going to make it, but I said, I'm sponsored for a lot of money. So she was doing it for charity. I said, Come on, I'll walk in with you. Walk in with me, you'll be all right. And Marsha went over to me and he says, She'd had it completely. She said, no, I want to finish, I want to finish. I keep on going from there. I said, just round the corner, finish. And when, when we got out line, she says, I said, you go in front there. She went staggered out line. She Thank says, you know something, she says. She says, that's the longest bloody corner I've ever known, she <laughs> says. I said, oh my God, you said it just round the corner, just round the corner. Have you ever had any accidents on your road? No, not really, no, no. My biggest problem is, um, I mean, all these flights are very special to me. And you get uh, kids think, and no, I don't want that to happen. And uh, I try to fasten, but I can't fasten them in, you see, I can't be so. If they don't do that, they'll bend them. What actor in the, in the film? Well, yeah, the bloke I'd like to meet more than anything 
I want one of the youngest there, the block I'd love to meet, and he would have presented me with an award, but unfortunately, many, many years ago, about, about six, seven years ago, they were down to give this award to me down at what they call Churchill Awards, and that was Jerry Jason, and uh, a dog boy, and I would have, I would have loved to have met him, but unfortunately it didn't happen. He sent me, a, he, he apologised, sent me a lovely photograph and everything, he just apologised, he couldn't, he, she was badly at times, so he couldn't do it, so it went nice for me to do that. But I've still got an ambition to make because I'm going to give some right broad Yorkshire, get some cockney back from him, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Going back to that question about the favourite song, my, my missus's favourite, right, well, anyway, King King Coyle, but we did, we did have the pleasure of meeting, uh, Tommy Steele, oh. when he came to Sheffield, uh, Tommy Steele. Yeah. And uh, she had a, a bit of a crush on Tommy Steele, did my missus. <laughs> and I said, I've said second fiddle to thee for years, pal. You know what I mean? So I put it off. Uh, bold. What's my favourite? What's my favourite from? Favourite bold. Ben Dripping, love. Ben yeah, Dripping. Yeah, it's out of her now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No question about that. That's, that's a no, no answer to that one. Where would you go on holiday? Uh, I mean, I've got one ambition left to, uh, I won't call it an holiday, I'd have loved to walk the whole coast of Britain. I could have done it, I'm sure I could have done it then. Yeah, I wanted to you. walk, start in next study and finish in next study. Every, uh, every part of England. Oh, Scotland, yeah, take that. Where? Well, England, yeah. Scotland and Wales. Yes. And right away around the coast, yes. yeah, stopping. Yes. I've got another pram, number two pram, it's my uh, grandson's pram, and uh, <laughs> so it's a bit rickety that one, so when I do, I have took that into a cross country race, and we did get round, and this, this marshal says, uh, it's ten quid, says they can't do it. Oh, she said, well, not enough, I said, make it twenty, he said, oh, make it fifty. I said, fifty quid, said, that's on. He said, you'll not do it. Anyway, we went around first ten mile as it were. First four mile, pretty easy really, well, a bit bit rough tracks like and that and a bit styles and that were carrying that oil oh, only a little pram all the top and it thought, well, I want to do this all day, I went all day. I went it back, I went even last. I thought, well we're doing all right. We're on a couple of wheels like that, three wheels and everything, but uh, I think we round and kept on going. Anyway, we come to a, a, a bridge, and uh, <laughs> I saw what he meant then. He put a plank across it bridge, yeah. and it weren't wide enough for Pram to go on. Yeah. And I couldn't have carried it across there. So he says, uh, I see what he means now, and I looked at it like that, so I'm going to put it away. So I didn't know what. I picked Pram up, put it on me and walked in water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I thought we were getting any deeper as you're going to sink like, but we got round and it paid up and all. I bet it, oh yeah, it was good. Have you met any local celebrities on your route round? Loads on them, loads on them. You name them, I've met them. I've been sort of made them going round and you all come out to see us, you know what I mean? And I, I think the local celebrities are the people that's putting money in bucket of all the studies and all this will say. But I tried to say in that point when I were. I knocked that together on by the Britain, that poem where I finished up and that, that's why they're all rolling down here, all the poem which is somebody just knocked up. That's what I thought about Sheffield people. I, I should have gone down to Prime Minister, uh, but uh, to pick a, a ward up called Points of Light award. I still haven't got it because I didn't go. And he said, but why, why are you come? I said, because I've got things to do here. I can't just drop everything. That's a one-off job with you. I'll be quite honest with you, I don't like the block anyway. But I mean, having said that, having said that, he probably thinks he's doing right, you know what I mean? But uh, it's certainly not my cup of tea. I think uh, um, Boris Johnson had a shot at me for that chance. We followed all rules and I fall to awful because I couldn't go to a lot of funerals and so couldn't anybody here that... Yeah, he's having parties all the time and doing exactly what. And his top priority, in my opinion, should have been these care homes and the people that are suffering. 
and he didn't. He says, forget them. You've had the light, forget them. And that's what's happened. And that's, I'd have told him that at all if I'd have seen him. I would have told him straight. Do you feel safe on your own? Do I say if it all? Well, I've no problems at all with that because, as I say, I can push that pram round there and I've no fears at all about anybody having a go at that because the police know exactly where I am. I have got a good report with police at all. They know exactly what I'm doing and where I am and where I'm going. That's good. And so I've no fears about walking about. There's some lovely people like yourself, but it's some, for every bad person, we've got a thousand good ones. It's as simple as that. That's how I look at it. So I have no fears of that. What's your favourite colour? Colour? Well, it's got to be green now, hasn't it? No matter what. Do you believe in aliens or ghosts? Aliens? Yeah, or ghosts. Aliens? No. That's a, no, certainly I don't believe in that. I mean, if there is up there, then why haven't we met them? Why haven't they come down to see us? Simple as that. But. I believe this, I believe that I'm going to see my missus again and my daughter again. I mean, she's waiting to throw me all over that dance floor when I get up there, all the way on. And she's waiting to chuck me all over there like she used to do at City Hall and Wiccano and Mojo and places like that, you know what I mean? So, see, no, you, you've got to believe that I'm going to see my daughter and my, my missus again and, and my health, the rest of the family, yeah. And my brothers, I mean, they've all went with this Covid thing and, and I couldn't go. And I'm, I'm a furious. That's why, I, if I'd have got over to Boris Johnson and found out what he was doing, I'd have killed a bugger myself. I mean, I'm ashamed about not being, yeah. not, not being, a, I, don't, I don't know the man personally at all. I don't know him, but, but what he said, he were doing this and doing that, we're doing exactly the opposite. And they were all doing it. He did a bloke here, went, went to test his eyesight. If you want to drive all that way up, he to test his eyesight. What kind of play we're playing out here, you know what I mean? It's just this for spec savers. He shouldn't have a party. Get the spec savers and they just sorted him out in two seconds. But it's just like that, Paul, we were stuck in our homes. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, could it be? I don't know. Have you got any funny stories from raising money? Well, a lot of funny stories, loads and loads of funny stories. Um, we were raising money for, um, not this work for Mike Millen, by the way, this work. Uh, you, you might, when it's your, our, our, our generation, might remember the old, uh, the old right weeks, yeah? Yeah. Right, right, yeah, remember right weeks, okay, yes, yeah? yeah. Uh, anyway, from that bridge, it's um, just out road here, that yeah, bridge. Yeah. Uh, we started there and finished it. A ladies' bridge. You remember it? Raff Race, yes, you called it. Raff Race, yeah? Yeah, I've yeah, done yes. that. Is, that's and, near Hillsborough. Well, no, yeah, no, 1960, I think it were. If it were funny, we were doing it for charity for, uh, I worked for Express Dairies then, at Broadfield Road. I don't know, you probably remember Express Dairies then. I was always driving well, with them. And there were six or seven on us in a, in a tin bath. And we were paddling this tin bath. Like we're hilarious, really, you know, we were dressed up in funny outfits and all. I think I was an Indian, I think, to be honest. I was dressed in the I was dressed as an Indian. And we were, we were doing all right, we were winning. And we were winning, we were going down all weird and all that, you know. We got right near the end, and old Roy Moore house, he put bloody plug out. He put plug out and that and we sunk. Just before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never oh, ever forget that. Look. Are you born in Sheffield now? Are you born and bred there? I was born and bred at Darnall at Sheffield. Yeah, yeah, Darnall, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you remember the old Darnall dog track. We used to play on tip. Uh, we saw the dog track, they were a big tip at side it. We That's dog track right. were. We used to play it here. 20 years so I'd play forever. You know, play for static board and finish it neat like, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Happy days they were, happy yeah. days, they really were happy days. We've been round Burton Street and raised £80 for you. Well that's absolutely brilliant, that's it. Right. Well, what I can suggest then, I'll get you a certificate, you tell me what you want on it, and we'll get you a frame certificate that you can hang on your wall. Shall we give John a, a big round of applause? Yeah. Thank you.
it's been a it's been a great pleasure to meet you all anyway and I have a Stop there. 